Hello friends, this is Rishi Gupta, and today I'm here with a review of a show that was recommended to me by a friend, and the show is called The Last Kingdom. So, The Last Kingdom, guys, was originally aired on BBC, and now it's streaming on Netflix. And uh, to sum up, sum it up, I think it is a good show. It's definitely a good show to watch. So, the show is primarily a tale of a time when uh, Britain or England was uh, under attack by Vikings uh, from the north, and it's uh, basically a tale of the power struggle that occurs between Saxons, the native British people. And and the Danes, which are the Vikings that are raiding from the north. So this is the basic plot of the show. And uh, as soon as you start watching, you immediately start comparing it to Game of Thrones, uh, which I feel is fair and unfair as well. The reason I feel it's it is fair is because it has a, a very similar to feel to it. It's about a past struggle. It's about battles between kings and conquerors that are vying for land and wealth. And this is also the basic concept of Game of Thrones. But the reason I feel that is unfair is that Game of Thrones was about myths, you know, mythological creatures. It, it was about magic. It was about monsters and all of that. But uh, this show, The Last Kingdom, is much more grounded in reality. So it's not as much, uh, or rather, it's not mythical at all. So they have tried to uh, take elements from real history, and obviously there are certain fictional elements as well. And merging of those two elements has uh, resulted in a good show, which is the season one of The Last Kingdom, which I have watched. So the story primarily follows one character, which is Uthred, son of Uthred, who's of Bebenburg. And as a child, he uh, witnesses a battle wherein his father has died. And now his uncle is, you know, kind of betrayed the clan or betrayed him per se and uh, you know his is after his life uh, Uthred's life and his uncle has taken over uh, Bebenburg and uh, uh, when when after the battle uh, Uthred is taken up as a hostage or by uh, Earl Ragnar and uh, eventually adopted as a son so this is the beginning and uh, immediately you have a feel of what the show is going to be like it's going to be battle it's going to be uh, you know gruesome murders it's going to be a cat and mouse game or rather game of thrones per se if I may say so. So uh, Uthred is a likable character you know after that Earl Ragnar adopts him as a son and he grows up to be a good warrior a good person as well but uh, as luck would have it again spoilers guys if you have not seen it as luck would have it uh, Kiartan and his one-eyed one -eyed son uh, betrays uh, Earl Ragnar and you know his, all of his family uh, uh, just except his sister is, is killed in a fire that was set by uh, Kiartan so that is how the show begins and now Uthred, now he has grown up, he must find his own way, uh, you know, and navigate through the labyrinth of uh, difficulties that are posed in front of him. So, uh, uh, again, I'll not go much into details of the plot, but I will definitely tell you what worked and what did not work for me in this particular show. So, what worked, what was good was A, the uh, primary character Uthred was really, really well done, you know. He is uh, he is not a perfect guy, he is brave, he is caring, he has a good heart, but he is kind of foolish and, you know, uh, he is extremely short-tempered and he he, he does not think well before he does something so that is his uh, you know drawback or his flaw that he he is not very wise he is very very impulsive but Uthred you like you know the way he thinks the way he does things the way he cares about people around him that is something that works uh, in favor of the show second I, I thought that the show was very much grounded in reality. Now that might be a side effect as well of, of a limited budget or a limited production value but I thought that that was something that worked for the show. So when you witnessed a battle you kind of had a feel of you know uh, that this is what a uh, hundred people standing together would look like rather than you know a very lord of ringish uh, you know grandeur wherein CGI has put in thousands and thousands of people one after the other and they are flowing like the wave of the sea so that is very uh, dramatic there is very, that is very good to see but I feel that what actually would happen in a war is something that is reflected here how people would struggle how people would tussle in a real war is what you see here so it's very realistic so and that might be due to the limited CGI budget but still I enjoyed that because in Game of Thrones I thought again in Game of Thrones as well there was one battle I think it was the Battle of the Bastards uh, between uh, the forces of Jon Snow and Ramsay Bolton when they uh, you know uh, collide so again that was again a very realistic portrayal when people are tugging pushing you know gasping for air are falling down uh, you know being uh, trampled upon and all of that stuff so that is again one thing that works in the favor of the show which is its real nature third is uh, the flow of story so the story moves very briskly so that is something I enjoyed in the show that there are no uh, there are no moments or there are no episodes perhaps one or two but mostly there are no moments wherein you feel that the story is getting stretched and you know you should just move on I don't want to 
sort of spend time on this particular scene. So that is again something that works for the show that the story moves briskly. The the travels uh, are not shown in very much depth, which might be a pro and a con, but I feel it's a pro. It helps you uh, move on. It helps build the pace of the story a lot. So again, that is something that works for the show. Third thing that I believe works in favor of this show is that the story is uh, pretty complete. So uh, it has love, it has betrayal, it has a power struggle, it has battles, it has all of that. So that is something that works for in, in favor of the show. You enjoy the plot, you enjoy the storyline and you are involved with the, uh, with the story. So these are the things that I uh, think work for the show. What I feel does not work very well for the show is A, a lack of characters that you are deeply involved with. So again, 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 pardon me if I'm being unfair if I'm talking about when I'm talking about Game of Thrones again and again. In Game of Thrones, there were multiple characters you were involved with, you liked. And even if one character died, you had someone else to root for. So that was something that was very well done in Game, Th Game of Thrones. You spent a time, you spent time with a lot, many characters to know them better, to get involved with them, to like them, to hate them or whatever. But you had a relationship, many, many characters on the show. But in this particular show, you are primarily invested in the story of Uthred. I understand that he is the lead character, but I thought they could have had much uh, more uh, in terms of the number of characters uh, that they wanted us to get involved with to care for. So even though there are a few deaths on the first season, uh, again, spoiler alert, I'm going to be talking about those. So the queen uh, dying at the uh, last battle was surprising to me, definitely. But again, you did not care that much for the queen. She had just entered the fray. Abba died. Abba, so again, this brings me to another part. Another part uh, that I think could have been done better, which is that the villains. So a good villain is what makes a good show, you know, uh, and even a movie. The Dark Knight worked because it, uh, it was Joker. The uh, you know Avengers worked because it had. Uh, the end game work because it has Thanos. Game of Thrones work because because it had Joffrey. It had uh, so many bad characters. I mean, I will just you know can uh, name them all. It will take an hour. But uh, it had Joffrey. It had Ramsay Bolton. So uh, a show is as good as the uh, villain in the show or the negative character or the anti-hero, for to, so to speak. So in this show, you have a, a few people who are you whom you might consider as the villain. There's Kyarton who initially kills the family of Uthred. Uh, there is Abba who is killed by uh, Uthred uh, in the later part of the show, uh, season one. And uh, there is Guth. Uh, I, I'm forgetting the name. There is uh, Guthred. No, Guthred comes later. But anyhow, there are a few bad guys. But again, they are. With their appearance on the screen is extremely sporadic. You know, they are not uh, there as much to build the dread or the hate that you need to develop against a villain. So that is something again that I think they uh, probably should uh, you know remedy or they have already have remedied in the subsequent seasons. So that is again something that I felt could have been done better. So uh, that's pretty much it. So I, it might seem that I'm complaining a lot but actually I like the show. It's not that I really did not like it. It's just that I felt that some things could have been done better. So guys the Last Kingdom is a good medieval drama. You know you will enjoy it. I'm, I'm pretty sure if you love medieval drama it's a show where well done and I'm looking forward to season 2 I've already started season 2 uh, so uh, I hope uh, it you know uh, maintains the standards that have been set by season 1 so guys thank you so much for joining uh, me for this video if you like the video don't forget to subscribe like and share and share your comments in the uh, about the show below and uh, we'll be talking about a lot in the future as well thank you so much